Hello, welcome, and prepare to be corrupted on the edge. So, what we have here is the Civivi Imperium. Imperium, what does that mean? It means absolute power. And in the words of Lord Action, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Right, there you have it. So, guys, what I'm going to be doing is the usual go through materials, then dimensions and weight, and then we'll dive into design and attributes of this well made, good looking little knife. So, what we have here is a blade steel of Nitro V. A blade steel, one of those again that I have not been exposed to, reading up a little bit about that blade steel. So, uh, produced or sold by, and this is the company's name, a New Jersey Steel Baron, and developed apparently in collaboration with Buderus Steel. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. B-U-D-E-R-U-S. Um, so, yes, uh, developed in collaboration with those guys. Um, and then also reading up on the attributes of the knife. So apparently comparable to Sandvik 14C28N and very, very similar to another blade steel that I actually know very little about or nothing about, and that's AEBL Steel. So apparently what they do say about this um, Nitro View, in term, uh, this Nitro V, uh, slowly there, um, is that it is tougher than M390 LMAX and S35VN, so clearly pretty, pretty good uh, blade steel. Right, guys, uh, let's go through the rest of the materials. Uh, handle, we've got natural G10, backspacer also natural G10, liner stainless steel. In fact, all of the hardware on this knife is stainless steel. So we've got the pocket clip, the torque screws, and the pivot cap and pivot screw also all in stainless steel, and the thumb studs as well. And then the blade runs on... Uh, a caged ceramic ball bearing. Right, so that's all the materials. Let's dive into dimensions and weight. We've got a blade length of 88.1 millimeters, and that's 3.47 inches. Blade thickness of 3 millimeters, and that's 0.12 inches. Handle thickness of 12 millimeters, and that's 0.47 inches. Closed length of the knife is 110.7 millimeters, and that's 4.36 inches. Overall length of the knife is 198.8 millimeters, and that's 7.83 inches. And then weight, right, so I've got Civivi's stated weights, but as I always do, I'm going to be checking that on my scale. Let's quickly get that lined up and pop it on there and um, get that cranked up what are we on we're on grams let's have a look see here what do we have uh 87 grams hmm i had a little bit more i sort of tested it earlier on there we <laughs> 88 grams still a little bit lighter than sabibi stated weight they say 89.4 i've got 88 Let's check that in ounces. They've got 3.15 ounces. So I've got 3.1 ounces. So close as you're going to get without being exact. Right, let's get the knife open and look a little bit at the design and attributes. So we've got a traditional drop point blade, flat grind in a stone wash finish. Um, and before I do forget, let's just speak about that edge. So the edge incredibly neatly done even sharp out of the box as one expects from Civivi and Mothership We, I suppose, as well. Uh, got a big sharpening choil that also acts as a front finger choil, and I'll show you that when I get my hands around the knife a little bit later. Uh, we've got a big, long swedge running along the spine of the blade, almost the full length of the blade. Starts just a little bit in front of the thumb stud. You can see the plunge line that curves up uh, and around towards that swedge, so we've got a little bit of a ricasso there as well. I just want to point out a little dip in the blade just there. So just behind the switch, we've got a slight dip and then it raises up around the thumb studs and then that creates a little bit of a ramp over there as well so that you've got the uh, place for your thumb to fall, a little bit of a thumb ramp and then we've got the jimping um, on that area of the blade as well. So that jimping is also the jimping and you might have noticed that, that this is a front flipper so that acts as the jimping on that flipper as well and of course you've got the thumb stud. So I'll speak about deployment of the knife and action of the knife a little bit later. So I want to point out as well is just that extra little bit of detail around the thumb stud. So nice bit of 
shaping, machining around that thumbster. Just another bit of extra attention to detail on what is a budget knife. Really pleasing to see that extra effort put into the knife. A little bit of chamfering around the back edge of the blade as well on the spine. Also very, very neatly done. Right, let's have a look at overall shape of the knife. So one of those longish, slender knives, uncluttered, very, very clean design uh, on this knife. So looking at those scales, we've got that natural G10, and I really do like natural G uh, G10. <laughs> Battle to get that out there for a sec. Um, but there's a richness about it. It really does look good and upmarket um, to me. I really do like that sort of color and the slight translucence that you get that on that. Let's see if I can pick that up maybe at an angle there. If I hold the handle like that, we're getting a little bit of light on the inside. But just over there, you can see that translucence. So you're seeing, you're looking through that handle. You can actually see the skeletonized scale, uh, not scale, liner. Um, as well. Beautiful, beautiful. Love that material. I'll speak a little bit about those um, liners uh, in a second as well. Let me get the knife in hand. So that, that's what the knife looks like in my medium-sized hands. I've mentioned that I wear a large glove, so you can see I very easily and comfortably get onto that knife with space to spare. So either big, even bigger mittens are going to get comfortably onto this knife. And then I mentioned that that sharpening tool does act as a forward finger choil as well so choking up on the blade that's what that looks like in your hand and that is very comfortable as well nice bit of shaping to the scales too so let's just get that and try and get in the angle so that you can see so a little bit of milling and shaping on the scale just on the edge so that scale sort of steps down as it gets to the edge but again very very tidily done and that on both sides i hope i'm picking that up yeah you can sort of see that step down over there very very neatly done and then this little line that's milled into um this textured scale as well it just seems to be there more for aesthetics than any practical purpose but also very very tidily done right what else uh, pocket clip let's look at that so we've got um deep carry uh, reversible pocket clip so you can see the holes drilled into that side of the handle as well skeletonized pocket clip as you can also see and it's one of those wrap around um, so that skeletonizing helps you to be able to get to those torque screws um, so that's when you do want to swap sides um, and then I mentioned it's one of those wrap around pocket clips a lot of space in the back of that pocket clip uh, even though it isn't countersunk uh, and then mounted quite high on the knife as well. So picture that in your pocket. You're going to see the pocket clip and you're going to see just a little bit of the back of that knife sticking out. So it is deep carry. Right, what else? Um, let's speak about the, uh, what is this called? <laughs> pivot cap. So the pivot cap, as Civivi usually does, is the Civivi logo. And wow, crisply finished I and mean, beautifully done again as Civivi always do you can see that in fact nice little shot there of the crisp finish on that and also the same word the crisp finish on that uh, on that thumb stud just next to it oh, really is beautifully done and then on the other side of the pivot that's the pivot screw an oversized pivot screw and that tapers slightly up so it's raised over the surface but also incredibly tidily done Right, let's have a look at that line I mentioned just now. So, skeletonized, there we go, let's put it like a skeletonized liner. Also, beautifully finished off on the inside, no rough edges, and the little shapes kind of uh, interact, interlink. I'm not sure what you want to say, they butt up to each other perfectly, but even that is beautifully done. So, we've got a lot of material removed from the liner to save weight, and then a little bit removed on the lock side as well obviously got limited space to remove material but you can see it roundabouts where my finger is just on the inside the material removed as well liner lock so nothing unusual there traditional liner lock a little bit of the handle cut a little bit more of the handle cut away on that side to enable you to get to that lock to unlock it and a little bit of jimping to make that a little bit easier as well right i think that pretty much covers off 
everything from a design perspective on the knife. No, it doesn't. Uh, something I forgot to mention there. So we've got that natural G10 backspace, and there you can pick up the translucence as well. So you sort of look through there where those two screws go on, and there's a little bar on the inside. You can actually slightly see that through that translucent natural G10. And that just cuts back a little bit to expose the single stand off the back, and that's obviously your, uh, your uh, lanyard attachment. Right, now let's speak about action. So we've got the few ways to, dis, uh, to deploy, is the word I want to use there, <laughs> to deploy the blade. So we've got those thumb studs and then the, uh, the front flipper. So get hold of the knife like that and, and that, well, normally does, uh, normally does work well. There you go, if you know what you're doing. So there's the front flipper and then it works beautifully as a thumb uh, flicker flipper with the thumbs thumb studs as well and you can and I've been able to do this off camera which means that I won't be able to do it on camera but you can actually if you get your finger in there oh, look at that it worked you can actually spidey flick the knife beautifully as well so the action really good um, and it is with a little bit of shaking it is a drop shady blade but it's not Absolutely smooth. It's one of those slightly scrapey, not gritty, but you know, when you move the blade, you hear that sort of, and I don't know how else to describe this. I always describe it like this. You hear that slightly sort of, sh sh uh, and you can kind of feel that when you move the blade slowly, but it certainly doesn't effect, uh, affect the, um, the deployment, the action on the knife. It really, really is um, very, very good. Tidy, tidy built and finished knife. This that stone wash finish on the blade, also really very, very neatly done. Right, um, guys, uh, before I forget, because I know I'm going to, um, I just pause here quickly um, to give my gratitude to Blades and Triggers. This is another knife that's been supplied by them. I really do appreciate their support of the channel. And I've given to me to look over for a few days, form an opinion, and do a review and share that with you. So once again, I do appreciate their support. Check this knife and other Civivi knives and other Wii knives and other brands of knives and other goodies. <laughs> as well on their website bnt online right um there was something else that i wanted to mention yes the other options of this knife so there are a few other options available so Civivi, being the kind of budget version of we or the budget brand of we even within Civivi, this specific knife in this range is kind of the budget version so this one with the uh uh, what do we call it? Uh, the natural G10. You also get one that's also sort of a budgety version with brown micarta and a black blade. And then you get a slightly sort of more upmarket version of this knife. Um, and there are three versions of that. And they all are uh, shredded carbon fiber in clear resin. But the three different versions of that is one has a silver sort of shredded um, flakes in the resin then you get one with gold shredded flakes in that resin with the the uh, shredded carbon fiber and then a third version that has copper flakes in that and that really does look good looks rich and beautifully finished off um and and those versions the one with the silver comes in the same blade finishes this as does the one with the gold and then the one with the copper shredded flakes and it comes with a black blade and they all share the same blade steel they all have the nitro v uh, blade steel Right, uh, does that now cover off everything on the knife? I think so. Um, you know, just uh, in fact, before I summarize, let me do uh, let me do size comparisons before I forget, and then speak about my general impressions of the knife, which I think you can already gather are good. Uh, right, so I've got my usual suspects to do size comparison. The first one is the Spyderco Manix Two. Be a sense of that and then i see on my desk here my relative newbie recent acquisition my spyderco pm3 has gone a wall so <laughs> let's use this one this one is yeah i always do use it as well so this is the medford slim midi uh, and in terms of length those two knives are almost identical obviously the slim midi uh, a little bit taller as you can see the other knife I always do use is this one, and uh, I can't resist saying it because it's been out for so long. I think most people have either seen or have been exposed or may even own that knife, and that is the Benchmade Mini Barrage. 
help you to get a little bit of size perspective on that knife and then in lieu of my PM3 being available um, we'll use this knife because it's on my desk once again and this is the Kaider, Kaiser, Kaider? Kaiser Apis, um, a gentleman's folder and maybe that's appropriate because I think this qualifies as a gentleman's folder might be a little bit long but in terms of its overall shape and, and styling I, I think it falls into that category so give you a sense of those two right get that out the way and um, now i do think that i have covered off everything uh just general views on the knife so again a beautiful product from civivi yeah one just expects it from civivi and from we they the fit and finish on their knives really is superb and and i think this is Proof again that buying a budget knife doesn't mean you have to buy a cheap knife. Um, it doesn't mean that the knife has to compromise on fit and finish. Uh, it, it's, it's proof again of, of this company's ability to really build a beautiful knife. And it is, as I say, proof that when you build a budget product, it doesn't need to compromise. It doesn't need to be badly made. It doesn't need rough finishes. Um, you know, I'm, I don't know if I did mention but the blade centering for instance on this knife is absolutely bang on perfect quite often i will review a budget knife and i'll make excuses and overlook a little bit of roughness here and there maybe blade centering that's slightly off but these guys prove that it doesn't need to be if you make a knife um, in that budget range it can be beautifully made you know the compromise might be on some of the materials the blade steel and so on but they do not compromise on building it that attention to detail building it beautifully so very little i think there's nothing uh, negative to say about this knife and a lot to recommend it for so um, if you're looking for a edc in that budget range and want something that is beautifully made beautifully finished and is a good looking knife I think one to look at the Civivi Imperium, the absolute power. <laughs> so, there it is. Guys, and I think that's, that's it. I think I've gone through everything that I wanted to speak about the knife. All that's really left to do is for me to thank you for joining me. I really do appreciate it when you do. And as I always do say, I would equally appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, if you haven't yet, and the bell icon so that you can be notified every, notified, yes, every time I release a new video. Because again, as I always say, I really would love you is the <laughs> I'm looking for. I really would love you to join me more often. And other than that, you go well and God bless.